morning, Doug. Hi, Candice. <laughs> so we work together all the time on compliance and privacy issues, but we each have day jobs. I focus on intellectual property law and you focus on employment law. And we're always talking about how we don't really know much about what each of us do in our other lives at Bean Kenny. So I found a fun case that's in the news recently where Trader Joe's has sued a cryptocurrency platform called Trader Joe. And they filed a lawsuit recently in California. And I thought we could use that to talk about some of the intellectual property issues and explain them to you. Tell me more. Okay. So Trader Joe's is the supermarket. And then there is a cryptocurrency platform called Trader Joe that also has a domain name that it's operating the platform on, TraderJoeXYZ.com. And so, not surprisingly, Trader Joe's, the supermarket, uh, is not very happy about Trader Joe, the cryptocurrency platform. And so they recently filed suit in federal court in California. So what's the claim? The main ones are trademark infringement, trademark dilution, and cyber squatting. Trademark infringement requires likelihood of confusion. It's all based on consumer confusion. How similar are the marks? How related are the goods and services? Those are two of the most important factors. So here you've got Trader Joe's and Trader Joe. That seems like a pretty easy one. Cryptocurrency and grocery items, not yeah. so similar. Not so similar. And so that's that could be the difficulty in prevailing on the trademark infringement claims because what Trader Joe's will have to show is that consumers are likely to believe that a cryptocurrency platform is put out by or sponsored by Trader Joe's, the supermarket. Now, luckily for Trader Joe's, there is another concept called trademark dilution, which doesn't require a likelihood of consumer confusion, but you must have a famous mark. You've got to have widespread nationwide consumer recognition, essentially a household name. So that might be their stronger claim for the dilution, but there's also the cyber squatting claim, which goes a little bit into the history of the case, which I also thought was interesting because it kind of tells a little bit about like the evolution of how you get to filing a lawsuit in federal court. Because Trader Joe's did try over a fairly long period of time to get Trader Joe, the platform, to stop using the domain name and the name itself. They served several cease and desist letters, no response. So that's interesting to me because even if you get a demand letter that you think is kind of ridiculous, I never counsel clients just to ignore it. I mean, always respond, even if it's just to say, you're wrong, thank you very much, I trust this resolves your concern because it can come back to haunt you, which is a little bit what's happening in this complaint. Trader Joe's tried to resolve this amicably, no response. Then they tried again by filing a uniform dispute resolution policy, which is specifically for domain names. It is a arbitration system hmm. put out by ICANN, the international organization that's responsible for managing domain names worldwide. If you go to register a domain name or you're a registrar registering domain names, you agree to comply with this policy, whereby if someone wants to bring a complaint, it's a, an arbitration, you know, not quite litigation, it's a proceeding to try to get the domain name back. So Trader Joe's filed the complaint saying you've registered Trader Joe XYZ um, in bad faith, you shouldn't be able to use it, and it should be transferred to us, Trader Joe's. They lost that domain name proceeding. Mm.